The Queen is hoping to make her annual trip to Scotland for Holyrood Week, but a decision will be taken closer to the time. Buckingham Palace has said the monarch, 96, who is facing ongoing mobility issues, is planning to be in residence at the Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh when other members of the royal family travel to Scotland en masse to carry out engagements between June 27 and July 1. During her Platinum Jubilee celebrations, the Queen pledged to continue to serve as monarch to the best of my ability supported by my family. The Queen's children the Prince of Wales, the Princess Royal and the Earl of Wessex, minus the Duke of York who no longer carries out public duties, will be joined by the Countess of Wessex to conduct a host of public appearances. It comes as she smiled and beamed today as she continued her public engagements at Windsor Castle. Her Majesty, 96, stood unaided as she greeted Australian politician Margaret Beasley just days after she missed Royal Ascot amid her ongoing mobility issues. The monarch, wearing a yellow dress decorated with a pattern of blue flowers, was photographed standing without a walking stick as she met her guest. She shook hands with Ms. Beasley, who wore a black and white lace dress, as she entered the Oak Room sitting room in the Berkshire Castle. A Buckingham Palace spokesman said, the Queen hopes to travel to Scotland to be in residence at the Palace of Holyrood House for Royal Week, although decisions will be taken closer to the time. The ancient ceremony of the Keys takes place on the forecourt of Holyrood House as part of Holyrood Week, also known as Royal Week, each summer. As part of the tradition, the monarch is handed the keys of the city, but it has not been confirmed whether the Queen or another member of the royal family will attend the engagement. The Queen is usually symbolically offered the keys to the city by the Lord Provost and tradition dictates she then returns them, entrusting their safekeeping to Edinburgh's elected officials. Anne will conduct an investiture on behalf of the Queen at Holyrood House on June 28. On June 29, Charles, who is known in Scotland as the Duke of Rothesay, Edward, Sophie and Anne will host guests at a garden party at Holyrood House in recognition of their positive contributions to communities across Scotland. June 30 will see Charles attend a Queen's bodyguard for Scotland Redendo Parade in the gardens of the palace. Charles and Anne will also attend the Thistle service at St Giles Cathedral. Edward is set to host a celebration in the gardens at Holyrood House for Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award holders from across Scotland on July 1. Holyrood House is the Queen's official residence in Scotland and stands at the end of Edinburgh's Royal Mile. Her Majesty, who has recently faced mobility issues at the age of 96, beamed as she had her picture taken with the Governor today at Windsor Castle. It comes just a day after the Queen was pictured smiling and standing without her walking stick as she was awarded a special Canterbury Cross by Justin Welby after he was forced to miss her Thanksgiving service due to Covid. The Archbishop of Canterbury had been due to take the service of Thanksgiving at St Paul's Cathedral as part of the Platinum Jubilee weekend, but had to pull out when he was struck down with the disease. Yesterday he finally got the chance to congratulate Her Majesty face to face, as part of a meeting with Her Majesty at Windsor Castle, in which he praised her unstinting service to the Church of England. In the audience the Most Rev Welby gave the Queen the small silver cross, inspired by a 9th century Saxon brooch and incorporating a triquetra pattern, as a heartfelt symbol of the Church's love, loyalty and affection. Presented in a vivid red box and attached to a blue ribbon, the cross was specially crafted for its royal recipient with platinum inserts in recognition of her milestone 70 years on the throne. The Queen, who has a deep Christian faith, is Supreme Governor of the Church of England and Defender of the Faith. In the citation for the cross, which was also given to the Queen as a framed piece of calligraphy, the Archbishop praised the monarch and hailed her care for the unity of her people and the welfare of the least fortunate as a constant inspiration to the whole church. The Queen's life was an example of a Christian life well led, he said, the citation read, throughout her reign, Her Majesty has duly upheld both the Christian religion and the Church of England in her roles as Defender of the Faith and Supreme Governor of the Church of England. Whether in the formality of opening sessions of General Synod or the more intimate context of her personal addresses to the nation and Commonwealth at Christmas, Her Majesty has made manifest her own deep faith and its relevance to all that she undertakes. Her subtle understanding of the changing position of the established church in England has sustained and encouraged laity and clergy alike. Her care for the unity of her people and the welfare of the least fortunate have been a constant inspiration to the whole church.
Hers is an example of the Christian life well led. This presentation of the Canterbury Cross is a heartfelt symbol of the love, loyalty and affection in which the Church of England holds Her Majesty and it represents the recognition and gratitude of her whole church for her 70 years of unstinting service. God save the Queen. The Queen had a busy start to June as the nation celebrated her jubilee during a four-day weekend of festivities. These included a special trooping the colour with hundreds of soldiers marching from Horse Guard Parade to Buckingham Palace, a special flyover by the Red Arrows and other military planes, as well as a special concert in honour of Her Majesty. Among these was a service of thanksgiving at St. Paul's Cathedral in London, which saw members of the royal family and others congregate to express their thanks for the Queen's 70-year reign. However, Her Majesty herself did not attend after experiencing some discomfort during the previous day's festivities. She would also miss the Epsom Derby the next day, before making an appearance at the Platinum Jubilee pageant on the final day of celebrations. The service of thanksgiving was supposed to be taken by the Archbishop of Canterbury, but a combination of Covid and pneumonia left him unable to do so. Instead the Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, took it in his place and praised Her Majesty for her staunch constancy and a steadfast consistency, a faithfulness to God, an obedience to a vocation that is a bedrock of her life.